Now it must be said, I'm a big fan of Pi Hall ever since I did the review uh, quite a way back now. And the fact that they now have a Docker image just makes me love the idea even more since it gives you the flexibility to run it almost anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull down the Docker image for Pi Hall and show you the configuration that's required to run it under Ubuntu. Now keep in mind this is 18.04 that I'm running but realistically the same applies to 17.04 as well. Now with that said I haven't tried on 16.04 so that can be a different configuration or maybe you don't need the network steps at all I honestly haven't checked. So now that we've pulled down the image we're just gonna go ahead and show that first of all it's there and now we need to make a couple of configuration changes to the network. So first of all we need to disable the systemd resolver service so that's two commands one to disable the service and the other one to stop it nothing super complicated here and we're just going to paste the second command in now with the services stopped next we're going to configure the network manager config and we're going to make a slight change there to tell it to use the dns default so from this point of view I'm just going to jump into nano because that's my preferred editor add that line which is dns equals default and then save the file and continue on next we're going to need to remove the symbolic link with the resolver that's again relatively straightforward we're just going to do a sudo remove uh, to the exit slash resolve dot config and we're done already and we're going to do a restart now of the network manager. As you may have noticed, if you pay close attention, the network manager icon has got a different change. That's fine. And we just do a restart. Now, I noticed the first time I did this, it worked perfectly. And in this particular attempt, you can see the network is still out. Not sure why it doesn't start up first time every time, but if it does, like it did here, just go for a network restart again. And lo and behold once I do that it will start up and to demonstrate that let's go ahead and just do another quick restart and see how it looks and as you can see it's now changed to the regular network icon so now the network is configured we're going to clear this away and we're going to go look at the uh, docker run command in this case the one for pi hole now you can get the command completely off uh, docker hub and you don't need to do much in the way of alterations to make it work in my case i'm going to quickly show you what i've got um, i've got the port set up i've got the consistent um, file locations and i've got my server ip manually specified there are other options but i'm going to work with that for now so if I go ahead and just run this configuration it's going to a keep the config in a separate directory on my file system so if I ever rebuild it I'll still have the config and secondly it's got the IP address of my server so that's the one it's going to run from now you might have noticed I didn't specify the password you can specify a password as a parameter in this case I didn't and that was entirely by design and we'll come back to that in a moment but I will say you should really consider writing these down so in this case a random password is going to be generated by the system so we can go and get the password directly from the console of that container and now I can go and fire up my browser and start configuring and checking to see how it's working now if we ignore the first time that I've logged into this machine so I'm just going to go for local host because I know that I'm presenting on port 80 uh, slash admin and I should get the interface for PyHole. Now as you can see we have a completely clean system at this point so nothing's saved there. I will need the password in order to log in so I'm going to take my randomly generated password and I'm just going to put it into the web interface and log in. Now under normal circumstances you would probably save this or change it to something that's more memorable etc etc. I'm not really bothered because, to be honest, I can scratch and rebuild this from the container later if I really wanted. So, what I'm going to do is just prove now that this is working. And rather than extend the video even longer by setting up another VM and then logging in and using it, we're going to try something much simpler. We're going to do an NS lookup, 
and we're going to do an NS lookup against the server that we just created. So in this case, we're going to do a DNS query, and I need to turn my num lock on. So we're going to do a DNS query against the address that we specified. So this is the 2.0.2, sorry, 10.0.2.15 address. And we're going to ask it something like, hey, give me Yahoo. Now those Yahoo requests did come back, which is the first good sign. And secondly, if we look at Pi-hole, the web interface, we can see that that actually got updated. So the request went through Pi-hole. So everything is working as we would expect it to do. So let's do another one. Um, I'm going to try Google this time just to confirm again that it's working. Honestly, I'm not concerned about it not working at this point because I'm pretty certain that it is working fine. And I've also tested this a number of times, so not bothered, but just for the sake of proving that it works. Now, I can also say that um, the configuration here, including the log history, is now stored outside of this container as well. So if we look at this and we say, okay, we've got four requests here. If I was to spin up a completely new blank container, it would have zero requests. But if I kill the existing container because it's stored on the file system and then spin it up again, I should see exactly the same results. So I'm going to do a docker remove. I'm going to force the remove of my container called pihole. So I'm going to enter that. I'm going to show that the container is no longer running. So I'm going to quickly show you the docker ps-a just to prove that it's completely shut down. There's no lingering amounts holding around and and then I'm just going to do a quick refresh to prove that the web browser is down and that you know the container is not there now if we go back and again spin up our uh, permissions it does help if I put sudo first so if we spin up our container again and then simply go to the browser we should see not only is it available again but in this case we should also see that we still have the same number of requests that we had previously because we still get the logs from the same file system as they're not being replaced. Now, in this case, this is the part where I'd say you should remember the password or write it down. I didn't, so of course I've now forgotten my uh, randomly generated password. Not a problem, I'll reset that a little later. But this just to prove the point, it is worth actually remembering that. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. And as always, subscribe for more content.